Let's go right to this storm here uh, just south of Cleburne. This little signature here where you get that big burst of red, that's a debris signature that the radar is picking up on here. Uh, you see it here in the rotating cylinder. This is the sign that it's on the reflectivity of the radar as well. This is real close to Highway 174, Country Club Road, uh, just to near Rio Vista, Farm to Market Road 916. This is a tornado that is on the ground and it's moving off towards the east. Hail coming down in Cleburne. I am getting some reports of power flashes uh, around the Cleburne area here from this storm, but right over Country Club Road heading just north of Rio Vista right now, uh, right along 174 is where this tornado is just about ready to cross over. So Rio Vista, South Cleburne, take shelter now. Dangerous storm here. Uh, we, this new technology we have with the radar that just came out this year that allows us to actually detect tornadoes at nighttime by looking at what's actually being blown up into the sky is, is really remarkable and it's a, such a great tool for us because now I can actually say with, with great confidence that there is a tornado on the ground here by what I'm seeing on the radar. And we've got uh, Mike Casey on the phone right now. Mike, you're down there in Rio Vista. Uh, what do you got? Because you see a funnel there? We're between Rio Vista and Cleburne, and because of the, the darkness and, and as the lightning flashes, we have not been able to confirm anything on the ground, but it is a very large base you know, kind of disappearing down as far as we can see, mm -hmm. but we do not have visual of an accident on the ground because of the trees and the hills. Sure. Uh, on our radar, we're getting debris signatures right now, Mike, so uh, I've got a pretty high confidence that there is likely something on the ground in this area. Power uh, flashes, too. You power got power flashes? flashes? Yeah. yeah. Cleburne. In south Cleburne. Southern, southern Cleburne. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, how far south of Cleburne are you? Um, we are actually just south of Cleburne. We're right at Lake, uh, Lake Pat Cleburne. We're crossing over Lake Pat Cleburne, getting ready to head south into Rio Vista. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Uh, keep an eye on that for us. And Mike, uh, obviously, you're, did you run into any, any hail coming out of that storm? Oh, hold on. Wait. Stop, stop, stop. Oh, my gosh, Larry. Back up. Back up. Back what is up. it like? Larry, I think we've got a large, large tornado on the ground. We're trying to get visual. We just went through a large tornado, Larry. There is a large tornado. We have visual of a large, large tornado. We see power flashes. Larry, I can't tell because of the distance. It is a large, very large tornado on the ground. Power flashes. Mike, tell me how far south or how far north are you from Rio Vista? And is this heading into Cleburne, the, the, sub, the southern part of Cleburne? Can you tell? We, we are right where 67 crosses Lake Pat Cleburne. We're looking to our southeast and it looks like it is a couple, maybe two miles away. And Larry, it is large. Okay. It's very large. And you're seeing power flashes and everything. This is right yes. here, yes. Um, southwest of downtown Cleburne, uh, right over Lake Pat Cleburne is where Mike is located. 67 coming down this way. This is where that large tornado is on the ground. Mike, I know you're seeing this with the power flashes as they're, as from the lightning and uh, uh, kind of illuminating the sky here. Uh, you can see, uh, have, do you see any debris or any, any homes in this area that are in direct path? of this tornado, can you tell? No, uh, we can't. Uh, I think the hook's catching us. We're starting to get into some big hail. Um, we're losing visuals, and the winds have picked up incredibly high, but they're going into it. They're not, you know, we're not in danger because it's the, I think it's the rear flank downdraft. It's very, very strong pushing into it. Yeah, you can actually see it here on the radar. Mike's right up in this general area along 67 here, uh, and what he's seeing is this big backflow behind the rotation coming in and wrapping up in the storm itself. There's the latest position of this large tornado that Mike has confirmed. I, I said it was on the ground when I had it on the radar, and Mike's just confirmed it for me. All right, joined now by our chief meteorologist, Larry Mowry. We talked last night about so much about the, the blast and how surprised so many people were that we not only felt it so far away, right. but that windows were shattered at, at quite a great distance. A long ways away from the explosion. And what causes the damage when you have an explosion like that is what they call the blast wave. And basically, when there's an explosion, there's a highly compressed pocket of air right around that explosion that expands outward very rapidly, almost like a sonic wave. In fact, right. it travels fast faster than the speed of sound, which is more than 760 miles per hour. So that's the force of this wave that was going out from the explosion. What I've got here, Karen, is I've got an old trash can that I've cut out the bottom of it with, and I filled it with fog machine smoke. Okay. And over here, I've got some cups set up on this little table okay. to show you how the force of this can, uh, the sonic wave rather, have a force to them. And watch what happens here. You can see that little ring of smoke come across. Wow. And look at that, just that little force that's coming out of this uh, little trash can here.
here can knock over those cups. If I get a good aim here, I can knock another one off. But, you know, the force of that explosion was thousands of times stronger than what we can demonstrate here in the studio with this little trash can. Well, it really is amazing, and this it explains clearly how air, something like air, can do so much damage. Right. You wouldn't think there's that much force involved with just a compressed air, but, boy, there really is. Certainly as is. we saw down there in West, it was so tragic. Right. Yeah. Well, let's talk a little bit about a forecast. Though This is a big upper level trough out here to the west. You can see the swirling that's going on here. There are several upper level lows all embedded with this trough of low pressure. They're not moving very much. They're just kind of stationary out here in the Pacific. That's bringing lots of rain and snows to the mountains here along the west coast. We're talking about anywhere from 10 to 20 inches of snow in some areas. And when you get higher up in the mountains, there's some indication that some of the higher spots could pick up 100 inches of snow over the next several days as all these upper level lows continue to affect the West Coast. But what that means for us is we've got mild weather in control and all the cold air is bottled up here into Canada. Look at these current readings in, in the Yukon where we've got temperatures 20, 30, 40 degrees below zero. Our storm that we've been following really since Monday of this week is still out over the Pacific. There is a cold front, another one poised to move into the northern U.S. here, and there's a lot of cold air still up into Canada. This will be spilling southward here as we head into the weekend and early next week. Now, over the past couple of days, I've showed you the track on the GFS model, which is the American model and the European model. Yesterday, there was a much more uh, agreement on where this upper level low would go, taking it right over Oklahoma. Today, they've really been all over the place. The European has been farther to the south. The GFS has been still over Oklahoma. This track is very important to whether or not we see any precipitation or even snow Christmas evening and Christmas night. The other really important factor here is a cold front that arrives on Monday. Now, if we wake up on Christmas Day and this cold front is all the way down to Houston, that will mean we're in chilly air, temperature still above freezing, but the air will be too dry to really squeeze out any rain for us, and the area of low pressure would really wind up to our east. That would mean all the showers and thunderstorms to our east and the snow to our north and east. The other scenario that would bring us a better chance of snow is if this cold front on Christmas Day is still close by. That would mean there's more moisture sitting over Texas, and that would lead to some rain showers during the morning on Christmas Day. And then as we head into Christmas evening and Christmas night, we would see a changeover to some snow. That's what we're going to have to watch. I wish I had a firm answer for you to tell you whether or not we're going to get snow or not, but it really all depends on where this cold front is and where those upper level features are too as we head into Monday and Tuesday of next week. So stay tuned. It's kind of fun to watch. That'll be diving southward, and as that moves our way, an area of low pressure, which is developing now out in Colorado, that will move our way as well. And that low will track right along the Red River tomorrow night into Friday morning and bring us some chances of some showers and even a few thunderstorms. There's also this warm front draped down to our south. This is the front that slides through early tomorrow morning, and behind that front, we really start to warm up. Let me show you that here on our Future Sky forecast. Here's tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock in the morning. We'll see temperatures again tomorrow morning in the 40s. So another cool start to the day, but that front quickly lifts to the north, and look at these temperatures by 4, 5 o'clock in the afternoon. We'll be in the mid to upper 70s with really strong south winds, sustained 25, gust of 35 during the day tomorrow. So it'll be really warm for just about everybody. These are the high temperatures for tomorrow. Only spots that will be in the 60s are Paris and Clarksville, but everybody else in the mid 70s, even some low 80s out here to the west during the afternoon tomorrow. And then tomorrow evening, watch what happens here out to our north and west. Right along this dry line, showers and a few thunderstorms will start to bubble up. And you can see the greatest chance of seeing rain is up here along the Red River around 7, 8 in the evening tomorrow. Some of these storms could be strong to even a few isolated severe storms tomorrow tomorrow evening, so we'll have to keep an eye on them. Then as we head towards 10 o'clock, some of those storms start to dive off towards the east and southeast. We might have an outside chance of seeing a shower or thunderstorm here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, but by far the best chance of rain will be just to our north tomorrow evening and even uh, tomorrow night. Friday morning, some scattered rain with us. Here comes a cold front. 
And depending on where that cold front locates itself during the day on Friday, it'll make a huge difference in temperatures. Look at this at 3 o'clock in the afternoon on Friday up here along the Red River temperatures in the 40s down to the south in Palestine mid 70s. If that fronts a little bit farther to the north, we could easily be in the mid 70s here in Dallas and Fort Worth or we could only be in the 40s and right now there's no way to say for sure where this front will be. I think it'll probably be a little bit south of the Metroplex and that'll put us on the cooler side during the day on Friday.